Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the privilege of being able to study your Torah, your word. It's life into our spirit. It's medicine to our flesh. We thank you, Lord, as we study tonight and we learn, Lord, how we are to live, how we are to act, how we are to behave. Lord, I thank you that you just equip each one of us in this world that we're living in, Lord. And we just thank you, Father, that just as you called Moses up and the elders up, that you will call us up higher also, Lord. As we draw near to you, you said, I'll draw near back to you. Thank so, you. Father, tonight we draw near and we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your awesome glory. We thank you for your power. And we thank you that you love us and you care about us. Pray that you would anoint Pastor Ken as he ministers tonight in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us on our Torah study, and we're in the book of Exodus, and for those joining us um, online, um, we are in the Torah portion, Mishpatim, and it means judgments, uh, has a lot to do with judgments between man and man, um, and those mm -hmm. judgments, how you treat man is mm -hmm. basically a reflection on your relationship with God, and right. that's kind of how it works, but we'll go into that deeper tonight, so read them out, read what is the Torah portion. Exodus 21 um, through 24, and it's Jeremiah 34, chapter 34, also 33 and 34, 2 Kings 12, 1 through 17, and Psalm 72. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you an overview of the Torah mm -hmm. portion, and just remember that every Torah portion, even though you study it kind of isolated, you can't disconnect it from the, the previous ones right, or the ones right. coming up. Um, so, because you, you'll see that they, we, we just in the last Torah portion, you chose, we, the children of Israel said, we'll do and we'll hear. They received the, the, ten, the 10 commandments. Right. Um, and now it's kind of like, okay, now you receive the, the foundations. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to give you some more judgments on how do you work with people? How do you work with your people. tribes? How do yeah. you work? That's how right. do you get along now that you're out of Egypt, out of right. that domain of darkness and a mean Pharaoh who, who basically divide, um, divided people and came right. up with laws to harm people. Right. And now God gives us his laws. You said in your prayer, so we can yes, live by them, we can live by you it. know? So, um, okay. So I was thinking about this, all the commandments hang on two shoulders. Mm. Remember the government, rest yeah. on Messiah's shoulders, according right. to Isaiah 9, the government shall rest upon his shoulders. So he's the Prince of Peace. What do those two shoulders represent? Mm -hmm. I look at this, this scripture, Matthew 22. And he said unto him, you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The entire Torah and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So I just substitute yeah. shoulders for um, they hang on these two commandments. So Messiah's shoulders, yeah. um, he is the living word. And what is, what is important to God to love him with your heart and soul, right, mind and strength right. and to what love your neighbor and yourself. And so think about that tonight. Mm. This is the government of God. Where does it begin? love the Lord and love your neighbor. I mean, you, and they're not really separated. You, you can't get around with one shoulder. No. So in his kingdom, he's the king of the, you know, of the kingdom. And so the government that he is teaching us is a government of, okay, now you love me. Now, how is that love reflected? It can't be separate from how you treat your neighbor. And I think Yeshua you know, said it, Paul said it, and mm. you, you can't separate those two things. So Moses gave people the Mishpatim, the Hebrew word for judgment or justice. Mm. Wow. Remember, they came from a place where there really was no justice. Right. Um, and in the world today, it, sometimes it seems like, is there mm -hmm. any justice? But, you know, when Messiah comes to reign, he's going to he's going to reign with justice. You mm -hmm. know, he's going to judge um, according to his eyes. So mm -hmm. the Torah portion deals now with how an Israelite should treat his neighbor. And the way you treat your neighbor is a reflection on your relationship with God. And I think this That's is really cool. interesting. So even though there's different um, words for law, there's the sab, the command, there's the mishpatim, the judgments, there's the hook, there's the crease. They all are related. They, it, they all are part of the word, but they all relate to either how you treat your fellow man mm -hmm. and even in conflicts. Yeah. And how you how how is your worship of, of God? Because if you 
don't do what God says when it comes to your relationship to man, mm -hmm. then is God really the, on the throne of your heart? Right. If you're bucking right. that, if you, so now remember Israel was before this time, they, they had very few laws. So now mm -hmm. God has to say, okay, why did, why did they only have a few laws? Because they were more like a family. But right. now they're a nation right. and now they're going to end up uh, eventually they're going to have their own land. What does that look like? How do we how do we mm. how do we day by day deal with one another? Right. The worship of God of Israel was never to be a religion, but a way of life. The secular and the sacred are not distinguished as everything the Israelite will do, think or say is a part of uh, think or say is a part of their identity and covenant with God. They are to be kingdom people, a holy people who are separated as a special family and a royal kingdom of priests. So, and for those of you who might say, Mike, I'm not really familiar with like Hebrew or Jewish or the way they think. And you start studying the history and they've got, you know, they got more history than, than we yeah, do. Yeah. And you start studying, you'll notice that they'll say, Judaism, Hebrew way of thinking, we don't separate the secular and the sacred. Mm. So everything you say, everything you do, it's all part of your identity. It's all part of the covenant. You can't just say, I'm going to be like this with them. It's almost like it's like there was a book that said, um, there's a, a great leader taught this and he said, and it's uh, John Maxwell. He said, there's no such thing as business ethics. So in other words, you can't just have ethics in business. You have to have, you have to have right. ethics in everything. Right. So it's just, so that's kind of like, it's a holistic, mm -hmm. you're a kingdom of priests. You come from a, we, 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 we really are coming from another world. Yeah, um, exactly. Okay, so examples. Um, somebody needs to mute their mic. Phil, please do that. Um, examples of some Mishma team um, given in the Torah portion. The Hebrew slave or servant must be set free after six years. Okay, so just remember, it, they were slaves for hundreds of years. Right. So now God says, now, if there's ever going to be a, a, a Hebrew slave or really it's an it's indentured a, servant or someone right. who sold themselves or was mandated by the court, it, they can only serve a maximum of six mm -hmm. years. And then the seventh year, just like Shabbat is a day of freedom right. and, and, and rest, you're going to be free. Fathers to seek to provide for their daughters better life through marriage. So that's what we're talking about there is you'll see, and it says, when a, when a father sells his daughter, you're, he's not really selling his daughter mm. as much as he's giving her an opportunity to marry into a family that could elevate her. Yeah. He might be poor. He might have limited resources. He doesn't even have a dowry for her. Mm -hmm. So what is he going to do? He's going to find the family. Will you take her in? And, yeah. and, and let's see if she's the right fit. And if she's the right fit, you're going to marry her and it's going to elevate her. Mm -hmm. So that, so it's, it's a totally different way of thinking. Every one of these laws are for good. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. The right of a married woman to be provided for in the three areas of food, clothing, and marital relations. This is so huge. Mm. So when you're married, you have to, according to the word of God, you remember the Bible says in the New Testament, he who provides not for his own house right. is, is has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So in, in the scriptures, you see a woman, a married wife cannot, her, her livelihood cannot be diminished in three areas, food, clothing, which is also shelter, and yeah. she has to have intimacy, right. marital relations. Um, and, and this is in the context of even if they were to take another wife, and that le lets you know that really taking another wife was never the mm -hmm. best idea because in one area, they're, they're going to have a diminishment. Mm -hmm. And that God's basically saying from mm -hmm. the beginning, it's not the best thing. Okay, go ahead. When someone kills someone intentionally, and unintentionally with an object or their fist. So there's going to be a, a penalty for that, depending mm -hmm. on whether you plan to do it or as an accident. Right. The creation of cities of refuge, refuges for refuge. Of refu refuge. Yeah. I can't oh, say sorry. it. I don't know. I guess that's for I unintentional wrong. murder. <laughs> yeah. It's a place of refuge yeah. you run to if it was an accident. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. So, okay. Never strike your father or mother to be put to death. Or be put to death. Uh, or be put to death. That's a big one. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. never strike your father or, or mother 
or you will be put to death. That's how you should have written I'm it. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, okay. I wrote it for me. Okay, sorry. got it. You know, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay, keep live. reading. Go ahead. I know. I want you to read. So, <laughs> and, but that's yeah. a big one too. Yeah. Because that deterrent is mm -hmm. going to just like, okay, you cannot. And no, you can't strike your father or mother, right? Okay, go ahead. Oh, wow. Any kidnapper is to be put to death. Now, just think about what's, what's going on in Israel right now. Right, right. Okay. Anyone who curses their father or mother must be put to death. Even to curse, curse. them. Not yeah. only you, can mm. hit, you can't hit them, mm -mm. but even if you curse your father, mm. this is how, because this is also going to be re a reflection of how you feel about God. Because if you're cursing them, you're really cursing your creator. Right. That's your earthly creator, but right. you're really cursing your heavenly creator. Right. All right. What happens when a woman or her unborn child is harmed by fighting. Okay. So just keep that in the back of your mind that mm. every one of these laws, actually, you could find a story in the Bible it goes back to. This okay. particular one, there was quarreling between Jacob and Laban. And mm. what happened is Rachel got a curse put on her right. because they were fighting. Mm -hmm. And so there's a penalty for that. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting. So then you have the eye for an eye penalty. And it doesn't go like that. It goes like life for life. It's nefesh for nefesh, eye for eye. Um, it's, and I'll go over it later. But just so you know, that was never meant to be physical. In other words, mm -hmm. you wouldn't gouge somebody's eye out if you lost your eye. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't burn someone if you got burned. Mm -hmm. um, you wouldn't kill someone if you got killed. It has to do with monetary compensation. And there, and um, so just, a, there's five different levels of compensation that mm. you would pay somebody for harm. Mm. Um, and it would be taken account in these kind of things, but it was never literal. So Got people yeah. who read the New Testament and think, well, that was a law. They would take their eye out or they no. would cut their, cut your arm off. It's, it never happened because mm. that it was, this, it's the spirit of the law. Mm. It's not that, okay, so. Judgments for an ox who gores or kills someone as an accident or the owner had been warned before about the violence, the penalty for stealing, killing, or selling an ox or a sheep, the owner must pay four times for the sheep and five times for the ox. Okay. If a thief digs a tunnel and the sun rises on him so he is caught, he may be killed with no blood guilt. And if it was found and, and if it was found stealing anything, he must pay double for what he stole. Okay. Sorry for the misreading to say, sure. and if he was found. But um, so go back to this one. The owner pays four yeah. for a sheep and five for an ox. Where else does somebody get five times more? Benjamin gets five yeah. times more. And that's Joseph right. was stolen and he was the ox. Mm. And, he, and so anyway, that that's where that scripture kind of comes from. Very interesting mm -hmm. about the tunnels right now right. that we're finding out about. And there's so many of them. Yeah. And the tunnels used in this story is a man is tunneling, tunneling to steal something. Right. And if they, if yeah. you, if you catch him stealing something, mm -hmm. um, then if you catch him stealing something, um, then he's got to pay double. Right. But if you kill him, there's no charge against you because yeah. he's tunneling. Right. You know, and I think that's interesting verbiage. Right. If the sun rises on him, in other words, it's like if God catches him mm -hmm. or God catches him for you, this is what's going to, yeah. he's got to pay double. And you, you yeah. can take it spiritually. Yeah. Sp you know, when the thief is found, Satan's a thief. Yeah. When you, exactly. You know, he's got to pay double. He's got to pay double. What, what, exactly. What you, what was lost or stolen. Right. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. An owner must make sure his animals don't eat or harm anyone's field or vineyard. Okay. That's that's another. It's like you can't even mm -hmm. let your animal harm somebody. Anything borrowed, loaned, or rented must be taken care of and returned in original condition or make restitution. Don't let a sorceress live. Anyone who lies with an animal should be put to death. Never sacrifice to any other god but Adonai. The treatment of strangers, widows, and orphans is paramount to God. Now, look at this. This, yeah. this 
you can't underestimate how God feels about taking care of those mm. who are less fortunate. Yeah, Exodus 22, you must not exploit or oppress an outsider for you are outsiders in the land of Egypt. You must not mistreat any widow or orphan. If you mistreat them in any way and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will burn hot and I will kill you with the sword. So your wives will become widows and your children will become orphans. Mm. This blows my mind. Mm -hmm. God said, if you don't take care of the outsider, which was a stranger with someone coming into the covenant, they right. lived among you, they wanted to learn, but they didn't have the, they didn't have the background. They might not have the family behind them. You, you can't treat them. You can't slight them. The widow, she lost her husband, the orphan, she, uh, um, they lost the child lost their, their, mm -hmm. their mom or dad. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the poor. God said, if you slight them, if you oppress them right. in any way, my wrath will burn hot. I yeah. will kill you with this. That's a judgment. Yeah. The sword is a word. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and then it says, and this is interesting. If that happens, if you do it, you're going to put your family in a position mm -hmm. where they can become a widow. Right. In your children. Orphan. So yeah. it's really interesting because now you see a widow, you're thinking, why are they a widow? Just like what happened to um, Naomi. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's an, uh, should you treat them good or bad? Or he's saying, Hey, they were judged by God. They yeah. lost their husband because maybe their husband did. So, yeah. So, but you can't do it. He said, you can't do it. No, you can't, not. you can't treat no. them wrong. Yeah. Do not loan money with interest to any of your people. So that's really huge. So when someone comes in, they want to borrow. And I know this goes on in the Jewish community. When they want to borrow, they do not charge their fellow brother or sister interest. And I think that, you know, we need to do the same thing with their brother or sister in the Lord. When they come to us and ask us to borrow, we should not charge them interest because he said, makes it clear there. So really what he's talking about is your if you're in the family, right? whether it's a family of Israel or it's your family. Mm -hmm. And I know many family members, that they don't do that. Yeah. And it's like, wow, we're not doing the Now, why, why wouldn't you, um, why wouldn't you want to do this? You're saying, well, I need, you know, the bank was going to get me interest. But what if you understood if you're doing this for that, for another family member, another mm -hmm. believer, that God's going to give you interest. Yeah, exactly. And that what he pays you is going to be way more than right. you would learn, earn at the best bank. Right, exactly. Because you're banking with now with the Bank of Heaven. Well, also the person that they're coming to you because they need money, they're in trouble and to charge them interest, you're just putting it farther back, their debt. So we as believers, oh, we need to be there. We need to give people a, we need to raise them up. And so it's a it's a mindset. So do a do a homework. Pull okay. up the Hebrew word. I didn't give it to you. Pull up the Hebrew word for usury. It's there in that in that and yeah. in the access. And you will see how many times because I, I started looking at it, I was like, I couldn't even believe how God said, Don't do it. You're hurting people. It's a it's yeah. um it's very offensive to God. Yes. He says, Don't think you're gonna get rich by it. Don't think right. it's gonna come back and bite you. And there's people yeah. all around the world, they're making their money by hurting the poorest of people, charging them, you know, interest. Yeah. Then it's not even just, it's really an ungodly amount. And even if, you know, they're, they're not charging them a small percentage, they're mm -hmm. charging them where it becomes way more than more the principal. Depth. Yeah. Yeah. They exactly. can't ever get out. Right. They can right. never get out. If you take someone's coat as collateral, it must be given back the same day before sundown. Exodus 22, 26, for that is his only covering is cloak for his skin. What will he sleep in? When he cries out to me, I will hear because I am gracious. I just love yeah. saying that. God said I'm gracious. Yeah, don't curse judges or the leaders of your people. And you know what? I'm <laughs> going to say this. We need to be very careful. I know we have an election coming up, but he says it right here. Don't cu curse judges or the leaders of the people. Whether you agree or not, watch your mouth. Do not delay to give the first fruits of your harvest or the first of your children back to me, 
even to the first of your cattle and your sheep. And, you know, this is something else when people have children, it's important that, you know, when they're born, that you bring them to the house of the Lord and you dedicate them back to the Lord. That's basically what he's saying here. You know, you need to give them back to the Lord because, you know, he, he he's going to watch over them. He's going to protect them. He's the one them. that gave you. Yeah. Children are a heritage and of the And when you do the he dedication, gave. you are to bring an offering. It's a first fruit offering. Why? Because like you said, it's a Thanksgiving. It's a, it's a praising the Lord for that child. So yeah, I just wanted to elaborate on that. And you are to be a holy people unto me. Take what is torn and give it to the dogs. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we can study that oh, out yeah. a big time. Yeah. Um, but I love when he says, you are to be holy mm -hmm. unto me, you know, and it almost was like, it's like, why would he even say that in the middle of all these? And it's almost like he's saying, it's like, everything you're doing is part of your holiness. It's part of your holy, right. holy means to be set apart. Right. You're set apart. So you're going to do all these things, but you're set apart, of, set apart unto Hallelujah. me. Hallelujah. You're not to slander and give a false report, especially not in joining with wicked people spreading false testimony or follow a crowd to pervert justice. Don't take sides with the poor person just because he is poor. If you find your enemy's ox or donkey astray, bring it back to him. If the so one, think about yeah. it. This is what should have happened mm. in the Joseph story. Right. He's the ox. Right. And he should have been brought back to his right. father. Right. And he wasn't. Right. So mm. that he was their enemy right. in their mind. He wasn't right. really, but they, they thought, okay. If the one you hate has a donkey lying under the weight of the burden, you must help release him. And that's it's a lot of prophetic stuff in there. Exodus 23, 7. Stay far away from a false charge. Do not kill the innocent and the righteous, for I will not justify the guilty. Take no bribe, for a bribe blinds those who have sight and perverts the words of the righteous. Very, very few times in the Bible does it say stay far away. Right. But you've got to stay away from a lie. Basically, right. it's a lie. Right. You've got to be careful. You don't get in the middle mm -mm. of things. Mm -mm. You don't take sides. You know, at, at weddings, we charge the people, don't take sides. Mm -hmm. But you've got to stay far away as far. I mean, right. you've got to run right. from this kind of stuff because yeah. it, it it comes back to you. Yeah. It, Amen. It, He's protecting us. Yeah. And the bribes. Mm -hmm. Bribe. We know that. Mm -hmm. You can money. Mm -mm. can bribe your eyes and you're going to get on the wrong side of something. Mm. It's because you're getting paid for it. <clears throat> mm. Six years, sow the land, but every seventh year, the land is to have a rest so that the poor and the animals can eat of your fields and vineyards. Six days work, but on the seventh day rest, so the ox and the donkey can rest and the son of the handmaid and the stranger be refreshed. So that's Amen. letting you know that it's not just you resting. Everyone. But you can't make somebody work, right. which that's why you have to be, that's why we say you, you shouldn't buy and sell on Shabbat mm -hmm. you, because you're making, you know, you're participating in somebody else's working, working. and yeah. it's, and it's hard not to do right. that sometimes, but even if you, you have to start thinking like that, yeah, exactly, um, because you want the, those around you to be refreshed, right? You know, you don't want to force them. They have to work because I showed up, you, you're right. not supposed to work on Shabbat. Mm. Be careful to do everything I tell you and do not even mention the name of other gods. Mm. So you basically, you have to guard what I'm mm -hmm. telling you. And you're not even allowed to, I think this is really interesting because, you know, sometimes we want to, you want to learn about all these other gods. And he says, you can't even mention their name. You exactly. can't even say, oh, we're going to meet over here by this idol. No, you weren't no. allowed to do it. Right. Three times a year, you are to keep a feast to the Lord on leavened bread as the time of Aviv spring. When you came out of Egypt, make sure no man ever comes before me empty. The people left Egypt with abundance. The feast of harvest, the first fruits of the field, Shavuot, and the feast of the ingathering at the end of the year, Sukkot. So three times a year. Right. This is all. This is actually the first mention of the, feast, of the first yeah. foot feast. Yeah. Where you were going to go. He's not even telling them yet. He just said, you're just going to come before me. He's not telling them yet where it is. Right. He says, you're going to do a, you're going to do unleavened bread. You're going to do um, the first fruits of Shavuot, which is the wheat harvest. And you're going to do the ingathering at the end of the year. And, um, and it's, it's basically telling you through this, that even though you, the first month of the year is Passover, the end of the year is Sukkot time. Mm. 
-hmm. It's both. So it's one in seven of the menorah. I don't have one with me. It's like they go together. Mm. Okay, this is what I was thinking. Um, The on Passover, the first time Israel got free was on Passover. Mm -hmm. But the time of the year that they set the slaves free was on the seventh month. Okay. So the first month is when Israel got free of Egypt. But on the seventh month, the other slaves, your personal slaves, got free. And then the year of Jubilee, when is it going to happen? On the day of atonement, on that seventh month. Mm. And it's kind of telling me, it's like, well, may, and there's two times of freedom. Yeah. Maybe they're pointing to two comings of freedom. Right. The, co- the, the, the freedom of salvation, Yeshua. And when he comes back, there's mm. another type of freedom. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't mm. know. I'm just thinking like the first and the seventh. It's interesting how, you know, when the when is the Lord going to come back? We think we believe it's going to be Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, which is the seventh month. Right. It's the it's um. So anyway, and the seventh month, it's the end and the beginning at the same time yeah. because you're blowing the shofar at the seventh, but the harvest season is ending at that time. Mm. This is just crazy. Okay, all right, I'm I, I'm getting a little excited. Okay, no leaven should be on the altar and no fat should remain until the morning, the first of the. F- of the first fruits come to God's house and do not boil a kid in its mother's milk. So, so for yeah. some of those, you may have never heard yeah. that before. Um, but there's a Canaanite practice mm. and it's a practice of cruelty. Right. It's like, okay, what's going to taste the best? You're going to take the mother's milk, mm. a goat, and then you're going to take its kid and you're going to boil it in the thing about why is it so cruel because the milk is to nourish that baby right right but instead of nourishing that baby you're taking that baby kit and you're boiling it in mm. that mother so it's a cruel practice now from that it's been passed down through 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 the 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 talmud that it's like well another understanding is like we should not mix meat and milk don't necessarily have to agree with that, but that's where they get it from. Yeah. That's where they get it from this. And right. it's, like, it's like, okay, you've got meat and you've got milk and you shouldn't put the two yeah. together. And if yeah. you go to Israel, you'll find a lot. And then if, if you go to uh, Orthodox Jewish homes that they have a separate kitchen, right. they'll never put, they don't, they'll never give you a real cheeseburger. Mm-mm. They'll give you a burger, but they have to give you cheese that, with no cheese or they'll give you vegan cheese, right. which is really not cheese at all because <laughs> there's no milk in it. Um, mm. So just so you understand where that's coming from mm. um, and, and and just also understand if you're around a Jewish person or yeah. if you're in Israel, you want to respect that. Right. You don't go against that because that you don't want to, you know, that you don't want to cause them to stumble. Right. Um, and that's part of the mishpatim. Yeah. That's part of your love for God. It's like, okay, yeah. I know I might, I might not agree with your interpretation of that, but if you're going to do that, mm-hmm. I'm not going to, you know, and then Paul brings that out. You know, he's just, not I'm not going to do anything that causes right. somebody to stumble, mm. especially in the realm of food. Right. You know, mm. okay. God promises to send his special angel before them to bring them in the promised land. In that land, you must destroy and overthrow all their pillars and never bow down, bow down to their gods. Exodus 23. Behold, I'm sending an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you into the place that I have prepared. Watch for him and listen to his voice. Do not rebel against him because he will not pardon your transgression for my name is in him. But if you listen closely to his voice and do everything I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. For my angel will go before you and bring you to the Amorite, Hittite, Parasite, Parasites, Can- Canaanites, Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Now, this statement is given mm. before God tells Moses, um, listen, I'm going to, um, and it's so later on, and he tells Moses, and Mo- God says, I'm going to send my angel, but I'm not going, basically. Mm-hmm. And so this is before that, and Moses didn't have any problem with this at this time, right. because um, it's a different context, but I want you to think about this. Who is this angel of the mm. Lord? He said, it says his name is, is in, in him. him. Right. What does that mean? Listen closely to his voice. Do everything. I, then he says, interesting, listen closely to his voice, but then do everything. Every, I say. So is it God saying it? Is it the angel saying mm-hmm. it? Um, 
And then he gets, he goes on to say, I'll be an enemy to your enemies. It's like, God, it's the first person, adversary to your adversaries. And I was thinking about the New Testament when Peter is in jail. Mm -hmm. And you have a very similar language. It says, the angel of the Lord um, yeah. brought him out. Right. And I was like, well, was the angel of the Lord Yeshua? Mm -hmm. Was he... Because now I want you to think about this, and this is a big controversy in, in Hebrew thought, because they're like saying, you know, God's never a man or um, different things that they haven't understanding. Like Messiah wouldn't do that. You know, he's, that's, that's basically in Judaism, what they say is like, he's God's representative. Mm -hmm. He's a sent one. Mm -hmm. So it's, could this be Yeshua? Absolutely. But he it also could be yeah. a sent one because when, remember when a sent one, a Shalia, an apostle, when mm -hmm. someone is sent in someone else's name, what happens? They have your instructions. Right. They have right. your authority. They're right. carrying your name. Right. So when they speak, you're speaking. Now, here's how I'll throw this out of you that I thought was amazing because remember, we too have become right sent ones right what does he say he says don't rebel against him because he's not going to forgive your sin mm -hmm. now the the rabbis or sages say they say well if it says that it means that he could forgive your sin he says he says in other words don't rebel against him he's not going to pardon your sin if you're in rebellion but it doesn't mean he didn't have the power right as a now think about this. When Yeshua mm -hmm. breathed on the disciples, right. he said, go in my name, right? Preach the gospel. And he said, mm -hmm. whoever sin you forgive, forgive. It shall okay, be forgiven, they'll be forgiven, forgiven, right? Yeah. All right. Now, why could they forgive sins? Because we carry his name. Right. Are we him? No. no. Right. Does he live in us? Yes, but we are not him. Right. And it could be very similar to mm. this angel mm. And, and it's just think about, and when Yeshua is on the earth, he's representing the father. He's not even representing right, himself. Right. He's forgiving sin. Right. How can he forgive sin? Because he's representing the father. Exactly. exactly. So I'm saying, you're seeing this um, pattern right. of God's name is. And, but then God, then it's in the first person. So it's like, is it God? Because when you function under the anointing, mm -hmm. just like David did, Saul didn't even know who David was because he said, who is this guy? Right. He had just said the guy. But when you're cloaked in the anointing, it's as if you're another person. Right. Right. So I'm, I'm saying this to, to, to realize, to help, to help you understand, we have way more potential. Mm -hmm. Remember, Israel at this point, they were told by God, I carried you on an eagle's wings. I brought you to myself. You're going to be a nation of your kingdom of priests. Right. So there's authority as a, a royal priesthood that we have. We've not completely walked in. Right. It's not our authority. It's his authority. It's not our name. It's his right. name. Right. We have to be careful. Mm -hmm. Right. We can't rebel against him, not the angel. We rebel against right. God. Right. Um. And we have to be careful to do everything God says. So when you're carrying his authority, you can't put your two cents in. You can't put your idea in. Right, right. You know? And I think that's where people get in trouble. They function under the anointing for some part. And then it's like, well, let me add a little bit. Right. But God didn't say, you know, mm. Yeshua never added to one word. Right. He only right. did what God said. He Amen. Only, okay. Amen. God has great promises to those who will not bow to the false God, but instead will worship him. Exodus 23, 25, you are to serve Adonai your God and he will bless your food and your water. Moreover, I will take sickness away from your midst. None will miscarry nor be barren in your land and I will fill, I will fill up the number of your days. I know you pray this prayer. Yes. I know I pray this scripture yes. all yes. the time. Yes. If you serve Adonai, yeah. you'll bless your bread, bread your you'll water. have daily provision or resources for life. That's yeah. basically the bread and the water. It's resources. Mm -hmm. He'll take sickness from he, from your mints. None will be barren. None will miss. I mean, we got to walk. Yes, we got to claim yes, this. Yes. Your days yes. will be fulfilled by the yes. Lord. He said, I'm going to fulfill your days. Mm -hmm. You know what? You're going to fulfill your days. You got to understand the word fulfilled has to do with purpose. I'm going to fulfill your days. And my, you're going to do my purpose for your life. 
but the key is serve. serve. Yeah. That was, it's like, it's like serve out of night. And then all these things will happen. Serve is the word of God. You got to work for him. Mm -hmm. The first mention of, of serving is the earth. God yeah. put man in the yeah. garden to serve it. Look, he put him in the garden the to, to dress it, it. Yeah. to serve it and even yeah. to guard it. To but it, yeah. the first service of man was to the garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we're going back to. Yeah. And I think that's the context. I want you to serve me, serve the kingdom, serve the, the garden yeah. of Eden is symbolic to, to heaven, to the kingdom of heaven. But so the first job of man is to serve in the garden of Eden. That's our, that was our first job. I believe that's what we're going back yes, to. Yes, yes. Genesis, but yeah. he moves him from there after the curse. And what happens? Therefore, the Lord God sent for, forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was, he was taken. So now he's going, he was go, he's going back to the regular earth and he's going to serve mm -hmm. this ground. He was first serving in the, he was taken from the regular land, brought in the garden. He served. Now, because of the curse, you're out of the garden, you're exiled, and you're brought to the regular land. And now you're, ex you're in exile. God, when man's exile from God's garden, the earth was what man had to serve. So you had to serve the earth as a man. And now as a man, you're going to serve the earth with toil, with labor, right? You're going right. to be hard for it. Why? Because it's under a curse. Right. But that wasn't God's design. No, no. God's design is you work in the garden. Right. And, and so, so, okay. So the blessing of the bread, uh, this is to me. It's hinting that God's going to help man with the bread from the mm -hmm. earth and give him water. So serving God, when you serve God in this earth, you're not in the garden yet. There's going to be a grace that comes. I'm going to bless your bread and right. water. Now it's going to be easier right. for this earth to produce for you because now you're not serving the earth. Now you're back serving me. Right. You're serving right. really the garden of Eden. You're serving me. Mm. I'm going to empower you. I like to say God's going to put his super on your natural. Yeah. There's only, you can't explain it, but grace is an empowerment. Yes. It, it teaches us, yeah. but it also empowers us. It's God putting his super on your natural. So he's going to help us. Mm -hmm. So you think about it. If you have a career, if you have a job, God can take that natural career and job and he put his, his favor on it where yeah. now more is going to be produced in you're working with a lot of other people and for some reason it's easier for you mm -hmm. you're getting the promotions you're rising to, why because god is helping that ground yeah produce for you um because he said i'm gonna bless your bread right and your water because why because now you're a bob you're you're working for me right as you're serving as he you're releases serve. the blessing yeah on the natural that's right as you're serving him supernaturally you know, really, and he if puts you're that being grace, faithful yes, by serving him and whatever, yeah. which is basically what we learned tonight. Obedience. The Mishpatin, yeah, do whatever I say, do what, do what mm -hmm. I say, Hallelujah. and when you do what I say, it, you know, which th there's a lot to that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a lot to that, but you do what you know, and right. you do what he said in his word to the best of your ability. He says, once you do that, I'm going to take care right. of your bread. You remember, Yeshua says, the heathen. They're the ones that seek things. Right. He says, you don't have to seek right. things. He says, these things, you don't have to worry about your 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 clothes, your food. Your He says, no, your heavenly father is going to give you all that. Yes. Amen. But it's as we serve him. Yeah. You're part of it. Like, you're part of the kingdom. You're part mm -hmm. of a royal priesthood. You're, he brought you on eagle's wings. He took you, he took you out of Egypt. He's going to keep taking care of Amen. you. Amen. Amen. So then he says, literally in the Hebrew, God says, I'm going to reroute the sickness. I'm going to reroute it yes, out of our midst. Amen, amen. So this is something you definitely want to play, pray Exodus right. 23 yeah. and quote it back to God because the Hebrew yeah. form, word, way for prayer is you you remind God of his word. Yeah. Say, God, you said in your word, I'm, you're going to reroute sickness. So take you're going to take it out of my midst. Yes, it's not, going, it's not going to be on my granddaughter, my daughter, my right. family. Yes. It, it can't be around the Israelite camp. That's right. Hallelujah. There's some big promises here. Yeah. Um, and, and this is the word sur. He's going to turn it to mm. cause it to turn aside, to cause it to depart, to remove it, to take it away, to put it away. He's going to depose it. It's out of here. Hallelujah. That sickness is, I love that. So none would be miscarrying, carrying, well, you know that, and are barren. And 
God would help the covenant people as they keep his judgments to fulfill what he had already written for them for all their days. Yeah. I just think this is amazing. Yeah. The fear of God will cause the people to run away in terror. And that's the enemies. Yeah. He's going to cause the enemies. Look at the word for terror. It's the word. Mm -hmm. They're going to run away in fright. They're, they're going to run away shortened. They're going to run away in dread, in horror. Um, it, it, okay, now, this is what he says. I will send my terror before you and throw all the people to whom you will come into panic and make all your enemies turn their backs to you. I will send the hornet before you, which will drive out the Hivites, Canaanites, and the Hittites from before you. I will not drive them out from before you in a single year. Otherwise, the land will become desolate and the animals of the field will multiply against you. But little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you are fruitful. Then you will possess the land. This is so powerful. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Rahab is going to tell later, she's going to say the same thing. Their terror has fallen on us. Yeah. Um, and okay. So I don't want to take too much time in that, but I want you to see something. This is the same word as when Egypt um, pursued um, Israel and God put their chariots in, into, yeah. he troubled them. He, right. he panicked them. He, he fought for them. Yeah. Okay. So over and over, God says, the same way I took care of Pharaoh, just keep going. And throughout right. your journey of life, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do, I'm going to. Hallelujah. Okay. I love this one about the Philistines. First Samuel 7, 10. As Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomforted them. And they were smitten before Israel. You have that. Last, you don't have to turn yeah. there, but last, two weeks ago, so Sarah, yeah. same word. So yeah. over and over, but God Deborah, that's is right. fighting for chariot. us. He's he's putting them in pain. Mm -hmm. He's, he, I mean, he's disrupted. He's a disruptor to the enemy. He's, I'll be an adversary to your en adversaries. But here's the cool thing. God told Israel, little by little. Mm -hmm. And remember, how do they get the manna every day? Little yeah. by little, right? Right. I'll remove your enemies as you get fruitful. You got to get, you got to increase. See, this is the key. God's not going to give you more than you can handle. He's going to remove your enemies as you're going to get stronger. And as you get stronger, more of those enemies are going to fall. Mm. You're going to multiply. You're going to get more. Uh, and then you're going to be able to possess the land. So you got to be fruitful. You got to increase. Okay. Little by little, the word is work. The Lord is working in you, right? He's mm -hmm. working through you little by little. The familiar ways of the nations, the ungodly belief systems, the culture, they're yeah. being dealt with. They're rolling off us. Like we talk about Golgotha, yes, the yes. Gilgal. Yeah. It takes time. It takes years, right? Yeah. And that comes to the serving of the Lord as we continue to serve the Lord, as we read his word, as we study his word, as we pray, as and we listen to teaching, it rolls off of us. Now think, tie that in. Remember, as you increase, that's one definition, but it also mm -hmm. the, as, the more fruitful you are, tie that in with the fruit, the fruit of the spirit, the more we operate in the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Love, joy, you know, I put it there, you, I, but you can look yeah. it back. But the more you operate in the, the fruit of the spirit, the more yeah. those other, the, the, the works of the flesh are brought in subjection. Right, right. And, and Paul understood that. Te we're, what we're teaching you tonight, there's nothing new. Mm. God said, all right, the same God of the Old Testament was teaching the people. You're going to take care of the, I'm going to take care of the enemies, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to take care of them all at once. you got to get stronger. Yeah. you got to grow little by little. You're going to learn how to follow me. You're going to learn about my judgments. You're going to learn about my, my, my mitzvahs. You're going to learn about my precepts. You're going to learn about my hooks. You're going to learn about my Shabbats. You're going to learn about my feast days. It takes time. Sometimes right. if people, if you're just watching this for the first time or you just started, you're like, this is overwhelming. I mean, what is all this stuff? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Remember, it's little by little. Right. It's daily bread. Yeah. You know, mm. basically what has had to happen to Israelites they had to get deprogrammed from Egypt in mm -hmm. the same way. When you come into Messiah, you get a, you have to get deprogrammed from the world yes, systems yes. and religious systems. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay. And then the more you increase, eventually you're going to possess the land. But basically he's saying, you're ready to go back into the land. Mm -hmm. We're going to be ready to go back into the land. Amen. So let's look at, um, 
Exodus 23, 29. I will not drive them out from before you in a single year. Otherwise, the land would become desolate and the animals of the field will multiply against you. But little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you are fruitful. Then you will possess the land. I will set your border from the Sea of Reeds to the Sea of the Philistines and from the wilderness to the Euphrates River. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand. And you are to drive them out before you. Okay, I think this is interesting because mm -hmm. remember when God took them out of Egypt, he said, do not go right. through the Philistines. Now, and then keep reading. Okay, oh, the, the, I, I'm sorry. Make no covenant with them or with their gods. They must not dwell in the land and cause you to sin against me. For if you worship their gods, they will be a snare to you. Okay, so God, God basically is saying some things. Mm. You cannot, you if, if, if you let them stay, mm. if you make an agreement with them, right. it's going to snare you. Yes. So remember, they can't go through the Philistines. The Philistines lived in the land that God promised Abraham. But now God confirms the border of Israel is from the sea, excuse the misprint, of reeds, Egypt, to the sea of the Philistines, and from the wilderness to the Euphrates River. So they're going to be, a border is going to be Egypt. It's going to be the, where the Philistines are. So right. you can't make covenant with them. Mm -mm. You, you can't, they must not dwell in your land. Why? because they're going to be a snare to you now what's the word for snare mm. it's a noose it's a trap it's a bait it's a hook just to be ensnared right so we know the trap it's a it's a how do you you trap an animal you trick them um with the noose you trip them with a with a right. trap it's a snare and you and you and now you got them mm -hmm. um so i get i so i i so so and actually, I like what it says. It says it's uh, one to use of an iron ring put through the nostrils of a beast. In other words, we're controlling you. Right. Because you're snared now. Right. So I think about this tonight in light of what's going on in Israel. Modern day territory that belonged to Philistines is Gaza. Mm -hmm. we're, what are we dealing with now? Gaza. Mm -hmm. What was going to be the border? the Sea of the Philistines. Gaza is on the edge of Egypt. It's right. on the sea, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. There's five main cities of, in the Bible that were belonged to the, the Philistines. The name Palestine was taken as a mocking of Israel from Israel's ancient enemy, the Philistines. People that call, from Gaza or Palestinians, they sometimes will even jokingly say we're Philistines. Yeah, they well, they actually, they <laughs> call them sells that in the Aramaic. They, so they say they, that because in their that name was given them. Right. It was given. Um, it was not it, as a mocking. Mm -hmm. The the Romans did that. Um, and it stuck. So there's really, it's not Palestine. It's Philistine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Gaza, what does it mean? Gaza, and I talked about it before, but Gaza means the strong. And that place, Gaza, is a stronghold in the spirit world. Right. Now, think about this. It's still a snare to Israel. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they didn't do what God said. God told Israel, you cannot make an agreement, a covenant right. with them. There's no. So if some of you are watching and saying, they should just work it out. There's no covenant. Mm -mm. God told them you can't do it. And the reason they're they're snared right now is because they they didn't do it. Right, right, exactly. So remember, he says, I'll set your border from the sea reeds to the sea of the scenes from the from the wilderness of the Euphrates River. I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hand. You are to drive them out. Mm -hmm. You've got to drive them out. You make no covenant agreement with them or their gods. You and if you don't do that, um, they're gonna cause you to sin because you're gonna end up worshiping their gods and they'll be snared. And it's happened. So Mm -hmm. this is very serious right. that we have to be careful too yeah. that we can't does the Bible not say do not be unequally yoked together we gotta be careful we cannot um, <laughs> I thought it was funny we were watching a movie about Winston Churchill and he says you can't negotiate with, with a tiger when you're, in, when, it, when you're in its mouth right and basically that's what's happening now right okay so anyway we won't <laughs> go over that anymore but just try to think about all Israel had to do, and all they have to still do, is go back and do what the God said. do the yeah. mishpat, do what we read. You cannot make a covenant with them. Right. You cannot. They. You have to get them out. There's yeah. no other way. And I don't know how they're going to do that. Yeah. In the natural, but I believe be. God's supernatural. He sent his hornet. 
You know, yeah. there's a way God can, God can once you it. say yes, you yeah. don't know what God can do. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. So he said, yeah. okay. So there's a lot of revelation and we don't have a lot of time, but I would say, remember that the, 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 the Hebrew slave, um, there's a Hebrew slave that says after six years, I don't want to leave. Right. Okay, it's very interesting. Okay, so so now these are the ordinance which you will set before them. If you buy a Hebrew servant, he is to serve for six years. In the seventh, he is to go free without payment for without payment for. But if the servant plainly states, "I love my master, my wife, and my children, and I will not go free," then the master is to bring him to God and take him to a door and doorpost. His master is to pierce his ear through with an awl, and he will serve him forever. What is what mm. is this? I mean, let's look at the revelation. It's a, it's a, yeah. There's a lot to it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to it. So think about this. The door is a place of freedom. Yeshua says, I'm, I'm the, the door. door. Yeah. Okay. So that's already telling us um, you should go out through the door. John said, you, John 10, you can go out, you go in, you know, I'm the door. The Hebrew servant is to go free without payment. What is this pointing to? This is pointing to salvation. Mm -hmm. By grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It's a gift. So he's he's supposed to leave after the six years. On the seventh year, he's to go free without payment. And that's grace. That, that's a message of grace. But, and here's the word. Um, it's, it's you're to go out without payment. This is what it means. Exempt from bondage, tax, or care. Free, liberty. The root word without payment is kafesh means to spread loose, to be free or loose. The root word is grotesque, devoid of cost. This is amazing. Reason or advantage, mm -hmm. without a cause, cost wages. Uh, this is the gospel. The cost you nothing. But now, if you dig it up, remember, the root word, 2600, from 2580, you're not going to believe what the root word is. You're going only out without payment. You're going out with grace. It's the oh, word for hallelujah. grace. It's the word for grace. Yeah. It's the gospel. It's hidden in this. The person's right. to, to be let free by grace. By yeah. grace are you saved, right? Without payment. That's wait, wait, wait. What does grace? What does grace mean? Um without um, payment, yeah. Free. Yeah, free, right? Yeah. Free, you know, yeah. Uh, unearned, yeah. unmerited favor. It's right. unearned. You can't earn it, right? It's right. a gift. Mm -mm. So at without payment at its root is the Hebrew word for grace. I think this is an amazing find, but there's mm. so much more. So okay. remember every home of the Hebrews, when they were going to leave Egypt, they put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. Now here you have this guy don't want to leave. And now the Bible says, take his ear and put it to a doorpost, take an all, and, and, you know, and mark him with this, right? It's like, okay, they leave at unleavened bread. They, they actually go forth on the 15th of, of, of Nisan and they have to go through a bloody door. Mm -hmm. Very interesting about you. This is a, we would say it's a bloody gospel. It's a, you know, <laughs> yeah. freedom comes through the blood. Right. Okay. But now this guy doesn't want to leave. And also never forget that they left with the loot of Egypt. They didn't go empty. And that's the reason you bring, to, you always bring to God something is because right. you didn't leave Egypt. God always took, took care of it. And now you're going to, when you appear before him, you can't be empty either. So right. six years is the maximum time a Hebrew servant is supposed to be subject to a human master. Mm -hmm. They're to be set free on the beginning of the seventh year. But this could also be pointing to the 6,000 years of man prior to the thousand, the thousand year, seventh day when Messiah or the millennium, when Messiah rules and reigns on the earth. So man in the seventh year or the millennial reign will no longer be under the rule of man. So right, think about it. Right. You only serve a human master for six years, but on the seventh year, You're you go free. Go free. Yes. So six years could be 6,000 years, the right. 6,000 years right. of man. So now when Messiah comes, we're not going to be under the rule of man. We're mm -hmm. going to be under the rule of God, under the king. The, there's The king is going to take his throne. Right. So why... Would there be a, a Hebrew slave? It's just like, well, they could have got into debt. Right. And um, they got so bad, they had to sell themselves. Right. Or the, they could have done something wrong and the court said, hey, you got to be, you got to pay this debt off. You, right. you got to pay with your, your service. So, but, and this is a way for an Israelite to get a new start. It's not a pun. Mm -hmm. It's not as much a punishment. It's a, it's a, it's a leg up. It's a lifting up. Mm-hmm. And if you 
are with a Hebrew master, you're going to be treated like family. Right. You're going to be loved. Like, and you get whatever that family gets, you know, you're going to get. And so it's, it's interesting. So um, there's writings that say you don't really acquire a, a servant. You acquire a master. That's right. what, because you've got to treat them so well. Right. That's kind of like love your neighbor as yourself. yourself. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, but what about this guy who won't leave? Let's just look at it. This Hebrew has lived such a good life in the house of his master. In the house of the master, look what he has. He didn't come in with a wife. Mm-hmm. Now he has a wife. He's got kids. Now, that's going to make you not want to leave. Right. Because if you left, those wife and kids really didn't belong to you. They belonged to the master. So that's one, one reason why he wouldn't want to leave. Right. So let's move on. But if the servant says, it's more. I love my master. Right. It's not just it's not just that he has a wife and but he's like I love the master. Yeah. My wife and my children. I will not go out free. I know I could go out free. I don't want to. This right. master to bring him to to the court uh, to God, but it's really not God. My my translation says God. The Humish will say the court because Elohim right. could mean God, but it could also be the human the, the judge, court the yeah. judges. Okay, they take him to that doorpost, right? They pierce him with that all, and he's going to serve him forever, which is not really forever. It's right. going to be to the Yovel or the Jubilee. Jubilee. Uh, Jubilee right. is going to go out. But here's what I, I'm keep thinking about this. Okay, you're going to pierce his ear to the doorpost. The doorpost was the place when Israel left Egypt, they put the mm-hmm. blood on the doorpost. Now, what's going to happen when you bore through this guy's ear and into and put this all what's going to happen yes. you're going to put his blood now on, on door. that doorpost it just said so if he chooses to say and all is pierced on his ear on the doorpost the place of freedom it's the place of freedom but he didn't want to go the blood will flow from the man's ear and mark the doorpost the man will not leave until the yovel or jubilee so what is this pointing to i'm mm. like could this piercing be related yeah. To Yeshua, yeah, piercing on the tree. Yeah, he was pierced for us on his hand, not on his ear, but we know he he was on that cross because he was willing to hear and obey God. Right. But this person, he's like, okay, I love my master, I love my family, and the the one of the the, the reasons the Jewish people or the Hebrews say. Why did they? Why did they take his ear and put it to? They said they were at. They're at Sinai. He's at Sinai, and he heard the yovel of freedom. He's he doesn't have to stay. He's right. doing it by choice. Right. Why is he doing that? So, after a service of man six thousand years, Messiah is coming to rule and reign in the Father's house. Think about this. Why mm-hmm. this guy? Why would the guy? Maybe this is a prophecy. Maybe this is a proto, a pre-prophecy of what's going to happen when Messiah comes back. Right. What happened to us when we came into Messiah? We're his servants. We've been given a family. We've right. been given children. Right. And it's so good in Father's house that the servants don't want to leave. They right. want to serve the master forever. Hallelujah. So what is this pointing to? This is pointing yeah. to you and I who are, we're going to hear the show for, so we're not, we don't want to go out now. Right, right. We don't want to do our own thing mm-hmm. now. We don't want to take our family and, and or, or or take ourselves and, and live the way we want. The chauffeur is going to sound and it's going to announce the rule in the reign of the king and God's servants are going to stay willingly with their Messiah forever. Right. This is what I think this is, is possibly pointing to. First Thessalonians 4, 16. For the Lord himself shall come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the blast of God's shofar, and the dead and Messiah shall rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left behind, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So just, I think that guy is a picture of us who are waiting for that Yovel, for that chauffeur sound, and we're going to be with the Lord forever. We're going to be with yes, him forever. Yes, because if we are like that that servant, we are servants of the Most High God, and we love our master. We love Yeshua. We don't want to leave him. 
And when you're talking about piercing the ear, like you said, the ear is, I will hear, I will obey, right? So, I, so it's, we're saying the same thing. Yeshua, I choose you as my master. I choose to stay with you. I choose to serve you and I will listen and I will obey. So yeah, it, that's and, powerful. And I think it definitely has to point that, that piercing has to point to the spikes. Yeah. The, you know, the nails, yeah. you know, that, that mark, he's mark. Your mark. Mark, your mark. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. So one of the things I noticed that you do got this pattern over and over. You're going to serve God. Like I said, he's going to serve for six days, mm -hmm. right? The seventh year goes free or the six years. And then you have the, 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 the six, you're going to serve six days or six years. And then the seventh day or the seventh year, you always have this pattern of six and seven. The Hebrew servant's going to work for six days. Shabbat, you're going to work for six days on the seventh rest and refreshing. The land works for six years, the mm -hmm. seventh. I'm just noticing like this pattern. Moses, then if you read it, Moses is on the mountain for six days. And on the seventh, mm -hmm. God speaks to him in the glory. Mm -hmm. Last week with the manna, they can gather on six days, the seventh day rest. So for homework, I'm giving you the homework. Find some more six and seven patterns. I okay. think you're going to find some more. So six, just so you know, is the number for man and beast is created on the sixth day while seven points to an elevation into God's time and space when God rested from the work of creation on the seventh day. So this thing bothered me. You mentioned the cursing of the rulers. Mm -hmm. Exodus 22, 28, thou shalt not revile or curse the gods, which is that word Elohim, which is the word ruler could be rulers, mm -hmm. nor curse the ruler of your people or leaders of your people. There's the two strongest words for curse okay. is used in this context. Mm -hmm. Two distinct words that mean to curse in the Hebrew language are used. So one of them is used in the Abrahamic blessing when God said, I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse those mm -hmm. that curse you. Mm -hmm. It's the word kalal. It means to make light. And I give you all that. But then there's a second curse. So both, both ways, it says you cannot revile or curse the gods nor curse you don't halal the 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 judges nor arar the rulers mm -hmm. okay of your people you can't okay so what's the next one the next one is the same word used to curse the serpent mm -hmm. and the the ground arar to execrate to bitterly curse so there's people they remember it's election time. They don't like somebody or, or it's not, you know, it's a leader. It's a someone you work with or a, your boss. You have to be so careful. Mm -hmm. The apostle Paul, remember, he yeah. in Acts 23, won't for time say we won't say we won't read it. But the apostle Paul gets struck by somebody. And he says, God's going to strike you. And they said, don't you realize you just talked about the high priest? Right, right. What was Paul doing? He yeah. cursed. Yeah, he was cursing that guy. But he said, I and didn't then he know, says, brothers. I didn't know. He basically is going to quote the scripture that we yeah. just read. You shall not speak evil of a ruler. Yeah. He of repented. Yeah. We've got to repent. And yeah. I would, we're opening the door mm -hmm. to our own curses when we curse our leaders. Right. So apparently the Torah is explicitly stating by both types of curses, we are not to curse leaders and authority, even when they're wrong. Remember, Paul was struck. The guy was wrong. But you still right. don't, you don't still talk about right. that about them. Remember, Yeshua says, give to God or what's God's. Yeah. You've got to give to the rulers. And you don't have, it's not an honor. So here's where people get it wrong. Mm. It's not an honor of the man. It's an honor of the office. Right. And you honor right. those in authority because of God put them in that office. Right. And when you speak against that office, you're basically speaking about the one who put them in that office. Okay. Right. So after that prohibition, then we're told, Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits of the, the liquors, the firstborn of the sons, shall thou give unto me. And I think this is amazing. Don't procrastinate. Mm -hmm. Don't defer. Don't delay. Do it quickly. You know, what God tells, tells you, give me the best. Give me the first. Don't delay. Right. Ecclesiastes says, don't allow, don't, don't defer, don't delay when you make, make a, vow a vow to God. Don't, when yeah. you promise God something, yeah, because you're going to, you, so, and, and it says, 
you got to give God your fullness, the abundance, what he's put in your life. You got to give him your best. You get, and the word liquors, it's mm -hmm. a weird word, right? Mm -hmm. It's right. Um, the, your first fruits, your, 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 your fullness. That's what and I said. Abiding. And your liquors. What's the liquors? I was like, I said, what is it? Alcohol? No, no, no. It's a metaphor for your olives and grapes. When would that come? Mm -hmm. That would come at the, the end of the year, Sukkot, the Sukkot yeah. time. And he says, don't delay. Mm. So basically, um, Proverbs 3 says this. Do not withhold good from those to whom is due when it is in your power to act. Do not say to your neighbor, come back later. I'll give it tomorrow when you have it within you. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been convicted many times when I felt like I was I was hesitating to do something mm -hmm. I know I should have done. I had it. I could have done it. And I didn't do it quick enough. And right. so I know a lot of times you're saying, just do it quickly, you know, don't, don't delay, you know, and I learned uh, hopefully more from my wife, but it's a principle in the Bible. We are mm -hmm. not to delay. This is part of the mystery. Don't delay to do right. the good things we need to do, whether, right. it, you know, whatever it is, it's our first fruits. And it, it, it's not just limited to that. Yeah. We're helping the, and when we're helping the poor, helping the widow. Yeah. The Shemitah commandment is believed to help explain Shabbat. Wow. Okay. So the Shemitah to land is equivalent to a Shabbat for man. So you, mm -hmm. the Shemitah is a, is resting the land on the seventh year. And the Shabbat for man is let is resting the, you know, on, on that day, the Sabbath. So six days you sow your land and you gather in the fruits. Okay. You gather on six days. Right. That's your fruits as your income. Your tabua is your income, mm -hmm. your your produce, right? You gather, but in the seventh year, look what it says. Thou, sh thou shalt let it rest and lie. You, you've you got, okay, so, wow, this is powerful. Lie, mm -hmm. you got to cast off. Take your hands let it, off. You, loose it, quit. You, you, It's not yours, like, I was like, you got to let it lie on Shabbat. Now, so how is that? So that's going to help us understand Shabbat. If you're going to let on the seventh thing, leave, permit, cast off, reject, mm -hmm. suffer, join, all those things, lose, cease, abandon. Right? And we always tell people, let put your work down. Right. It's going to be there. If it's not supposed to be there, it'll be gone. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> so what is it telling us on Shabbat? We're to be in a mindset of letting go, mm -hmm. releasing, loosing, desisting let it alone mm. throw down every care every weight every burden and be in an open and free state of receiving let it go the shemitah is helping you understand shabbat how should you say lord tonight on friday i'm coming into shabbat i'm coming in i'm letting go of the week yeah that the, the yes. last six days i'm letting yes. go of my work i'm letting go i'm putting my trust in you lord i'm letting go of everything Yes. Right now, I'm letting it alone. I'm letting go of my field because it really my field, my work, my you know, and I'm putting and, and I'm letting you take you're going to take care of me. Amen. You're, you're letting it go. Remember, we love you know this verse, you cast but, your cares on him. On him. Yeah, so can. what that's what you're doing on Shabbat. You're, yeah, casting, you're casting your care, your you're, worries that's on what, him. You're, you're letting it go, you're rolling it off you, you're releasing it. Mm. And the, so it, it's the word Shabbat, you fling it down. I mean, this is Shabbat. This, but it's also the Shemitah. Yeah. It's to figure to, to let it alone, to, to discontinue. I mean, all those words there, you can see them. It's like, let rest, shake, stumble, throw down. I mean, wow. Deuteronomy 15, 2. And this is the manner of the release. Every creditor that lendeth ought unto his neighbor shall release. it. He shall not exact it of his neighbor or of his brother because it is called the Lord's release. So this yeah. is the Shemitah. So he's telling us that you got to release it. You've got to release it. This is what's going to happen on the seventh year. You're going to release your debts. You're going to release the people. Um, yeah. And he's like, it's not about you. This is my release. Yeah. Okay. Remember, Shabbat is God's day. Yeah. He So he wants us to release on that day. He mm -hmm. wants us to rest on that mm -hmm. day. It's the Lord's day. Yeah. So some of you didn't realize, like, like if you read... Um, the scripture in Revelation said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. It's not Sunday. It's yeah, Shabbat. Right. The Lord's day has always been Shabbat. Yeah. So, so anyway, so, so the Shemitah, that word there, release. So release is, is 8059. Thou shall release it is 8058. 8059 is Shemitah. 8059 and 858 are almost exact same words. So 
What is Shemitah? It's a remission of debt or suspension of labor. Does that sound like Shabbat? Yeah. It's a release, letting drop of extractions, remitting, release. So you think about it. In a way, they were to let people, the, the, the stranger, the widow, the orphan, the poor, any other Israelite, the animals, they can yeah. eat your field. What's that telling you? That's telling you, I completely, I'm at peace. I'm, I belong to God. Yeah. My fruit is available for anybody. Yeah. I just think it's a, it's a way of understanding um, Shabbat is by looking more at the Shemitah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God will never allow man to decide what's right in his own eyes. In his kingdom, he makes the rules and we're to live by everything that proceeds right from his lips. Amen. Okay. So we kind of like went over time. I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So it's okay. I just want to show you to one thing. So, okay. So this is how they were to really at seven years, how were they to release the people? Remember, they're going to release the people on the seventh month. First time they got released from Egypt was on the first month, but um, look in Deuteronomy 15. For there will never cease to be poor people in the land. Therefore, I am commanding you saying, you must surely open your hand to your brother, to the needy and the poor in your land. If your fellow Hebrew or man or woman is sold to you and serves for six years, then in the seventh year, you are to set him free. When you set him free, you are not to send him away empty handed. You are to surely provide for him for the flock and threshing floor and wine press. As Adonai, your God, has blessed you, you are to give it to him. So remember that when they left Egypt, they, they had were bounty. Separate. Yeah. When you set your your this guy free yeah. that came to live with you to, to give him a leg up, you're going to bless him right. so much. Now, here's what happens. Remember, Jeremiah, yep. the prophet portion. Mm. In Jeremiah, God recounts, or Jeremiah recounts the commandment. Yeah. It's, right? The, it, and yeah. The, the commandment was, they're gonna, what Jeremiah was talking about, he says, remember, on the seventh year, you got to let the, the handmaiden, you got to let the Israelite go free. You've got to let it go. But what happened was, they made a covenant to, to let the, remember the, right. remember the temple the temple they were gonna they were going into exile um actually they were already they were in, in i believe they were in exile at this point um and they didn't want to do they still and, and the reason they went to exile was they didn't keep the shemitah one of the reasons right and they weren't being god okay they weren't treating their neighbors right they weren't loving right so they let these guys go free and then they, and then they change their mind. Yeah. They make even a big elaborate covenant where they walk through the pieces the way Abraham did. Now look what God says. Now you have had repented and had done that which is right in my eyes by proclaiming liberty, everyone to his neighbor. You had made a covenant with me in the house where my name is called, but you turned around and profaned my name and made everyone his servant and his handmaiden whom you had let go free at their will return and you brought them back into subjection to be your servants and handmaids. Therefore, thus saith Adonai, you have not obeyed me to proclaim liberty, everyone to his brother and everyone to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim for you a liberty, declares Adonai, to the sword, to the plague and to the famine. So I will make you a horror to all kingdoms of the earth. I will give the men who have transgressed my covenant, who have not performed the words of the covenant, which they made before me when they cut the half in two and passed between its parts. And the princes of Judah and the princes of Jerusalem, the officers and the Kohen and all the people of the land who pass between the parts of the calf. I will even give them into the hand of their enemies and into the hand of them who seek their life and their dead bodies will be for food to the birds and of the sky and of the beasts of the earth. So I, I misspoke. So they had not yet gone into right. exile. So this was Jeremiah's prophesying. He's trying to warn them. They trying to get them on track. They start getting on track, and then they go backwards. So there's something really okay, key here. So they made a covenant. They made a covenant. They made a vow. They, yeah. A covenant. When they do, walk between yeah. those pieces, yeah. they made a vow. And earlier we read in this Torah yeah. portion, you you cannot you make can't. a vow and go back on right, it. Right. So they had vowed they were going to release them, and then they went back on their vow. So and so we see what happens. Because you didn't free them, God says. This is the kind of liberty I'm giving you. I'm giving you freedom. The sword's coming, the plagues, mm -hmm. the famine. That's three of the altered judgments. Right. They're going to get the la they're going to get all four altered judgments because they're going to get the beast of the field as well when the enemy comes in. Um, and look what he says. I'm going to get it because you. So think about it. 
You won't treat your neighbor right. What's right. going to happen? The enemy's coming in. I'm giving yeah. you to the hand of the enemies and the hand of those who seek out. The dead bodies will be food for the birds of the sky. And the, like, this is powerful. Yeah. And strong language. And I was like, wow, this is because of, of their refusal to basically, you know, to do what God said. So I, I just think this is kind of like, I'm going to try to get, um, get everybody back here. Well, it's so important that we do what God tells us to do, because when we obey and we, then he blesses us. We have blessing, we have um, prosperity, we are fruitful, yeah. but when we disobey, we open ourselves up to the enemy and destruction comes and we can't really get mad at God because we did it ourselves. So yeah, I think I, a lot of times when people read this Torah portion, they're like, oh, this is, I don't get it. it. It's, you know, a little boring or it's, you know, but it really does apply to our lives today. And if we'll walk in the obedience of what God is telling us, we're going to see the blessing. Yeah. And, it, and yeah, it's the kingdom way. It just, yeah. We're just learning about the kingdom and if we don't learn it on this side, when he comes back, yeah, we'll uh, learn it. We're going to go ahead and stop the recording.